Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation on defining and reporting adverse drug events. Provided is the agenda for this presentation with timestamps for your convenience. This slide reviews some important terminology for the subject matter, namely an investigational new drug application, an institutional review board, and a data and safety monitoring board. A clinical research protocol is a standardized document that provides instructions to investigators on all aspects of carrying out a study. The clinical research protocol gives specific details on the following listed on this slide, but especially details on monitoring of adverse events. An investigator is responsible for knowing the policies of the local IRB, adhering to these policies, and maintaining a copy of them in the study file. An investigator is also responsible for the accurate documentation, investigation, and follow-up of all possible study-related adverse events. For multicenter clinical trials supported by the National Institutes of Health, investigators do not necessarily report adverse events to off-site IRBs as long as the local IRB has been notified. Details for reporting specifically to the Rutgers IRB will be explained in a separate video on managing adverse events. It is important to be aware of the design and objectives of randomized controlled trials or RCTs to understand the context of adverse events. This slide serves as a refresher. A physician investigator will document and review adverse events during randomized controlled trials. The investigator will document the temporal relationship as well as the likelihood of association with the intervention. The appearance of serious and unexpected adverse events could potentially lead to early discontinuation of a trial. In FDA-regulated trials, this could result in an update to the product label once it is ready for marketing. Now we will go over federally designated terminology in the context of adverse events reporting for investigational new drug trials. The FDA defines an adverse event as any untoward medical occurrence that may present itself during treatment or administration with a pharmaceutical product and which may or may not have a causal relationship with the treatment. An adverse event or suspected adverse reaction is considered life-threatening if, in the view of either the investigator or sponsor, its occurrence places the patient or subject at immediate risk of death. It does not include an adverse event or suspected adverse reaction that, had it occurred in a more severe form, might have caused death. An adverse event or suspected adverse reaction is considered serious if, in the view of either the investigator or sponsor, it results in any of the following outcomes listed on this slide. Important medical events that may not result in death, be life-threatening, or require hospitalization may be considered serious when they may jeopardize the patient or subject and may require medical or surgical intervention to prevent one of the outcomes listed on the previous slide. Some examples of this are if a patient experiences allergic bronchospasm that requires intensive treatment in an emergency room or at home or if a patient experiences convulsions that do not result in inpatient hospitalization, or if a patient develops drug dependency or drug abuse. A suspected adverse reaction is any adverse event for which there is reasonable possibility that the drug caused the event. Reasonable possibility here means that there is evidence to suggest a causal relationship between the drug and the adverse event. It implies a lesser degree of certainty about causality than the term adverse reaction. An adverse event or suspected adverse reaction is considered unexpected if 1. It is not listed in the investigator brochure, which will be defined on the next slide. 2. It is not listed in the investigator brochure at the specificity or severity that has been observed. Or 3. If the investigator brochure is not required or available, the event is classified as unexpected 
if it is not consistent with the risk information described in the general investigational plan or elsewhere in the current application for the product. Investigators may obtain an investigator brochure from the IND product manufacturer. The brochure is updated as the IND development program progresses and new information becomes available. It is expected to contain a description of the possible risks and side effects to be anticipated on the basis of prior experience with the drug, as well as any precautions or special monitoring to be done as part of the investigational use of the drug. Now we will go over reasons for notifying the FDA and any participating investigators of an adverse event. Participating investigators are all those to whom the sponsor is providing drug under its IND or under any other investigator's IND. The sponsor must communicate via an IND safety report all potential serious risks as soon as possible. This cannot be later than 15 calendar days after the sponsor determines that information qualifies for reporting. Qualifying information is clarified on the following slides. The sponsor must report any suspected adverse reaction that is both serious and unexpected. The sponsor must report an adverse event as a suspected adverse reaction only if there is evidence to suggest a causal relationship between the drug and the adverse event. Evidence to suggest a causal relationship will be defined on the next slide. The following are examples of evidence to suggest a causal relationship between a drug and an adverse event. One is a single occurrence of an event that is uncommon and known to be strongly associated with drug exposure. Two is one or more occurrences of an event that is not commonly associated with drug exposure, but is otherwise uncommon in the population exposed to the drug. And three, is that an aggregate analysis of specific events observed in a clinical trial that indicates those events occur more frequently in the drug treatment group than a concurrent or historical control group. The sponsor is also responsible for reporting any findings from studies that suggest a significant risk in humans exposed to the drug. These risks can be found in epidemiological studies, pooled analysis of multiple studies, or in other clinical studies. Typically, this finding on the part of the sponsor would result in a safety-related change in the overall conduct of the clinical investigation. This could comprise a change in the protocol, in the informed consent document, or in the investigator brochure. The sponsor must report any findings from animal or in vitro testing, whether or not conducted by the sponsor, that suggest a significant risk in humans exposed to the drug such as reports of mutagenicity, teratogenicity, or carcinogenicity at or near the expected human exposure. Another necessary qualifier for reporting is any clinically important increase in the rate of a serious suspected adverse reaction over that listed in the protocol or the investigator brochure. Lastly, the sponsor must notify the FDA of any unexpected, fatal, or life-threatening suspected adverse reaction as soon as possible, but in no case later than seven calendar days after the sponsor's initial receipt of the information. This slide contains helpful links to be aware of federal definitions and reporting requirements for adverse events. Provided are the references used in this presentation, Thank you for your time and your attention.